Hello YouTube, it's Doss Grigger, and welcome to another First Impressions. Today we'll be looking at Slitaz Linux. And the first thing I'm going to say is just disregard this date and time. For some weird reason, it's just screwing all up, and I've given up playing with it. Another disclaimer that I'm going to stay, say straight away is that this is one of those distributions that I installed in a partition. However, after about the second or third time that it sort of blew up on me and I couldn't get simple things like a screen recording program to work or FFmpeg or VLC to run that sort of thing I kind of just gave up with it and decided to throw it into a virtual box so if you're wondering why there's no webcam working or anything like that we're just running it right now in Oracle on my Gen 2 system I went ahead and did it this way because for the most part nothing is going to really change about what I have to say about this distribution. So let's get started. The live DVD or boot media worked great on a USB stick. I did have to use the ISO hybrid utility to get the ISO to lay down properly onto my USB stick. After that it did set up and run the installation was quite easy and very fast. It takes up very little space. In fact, if we run the main control panel here, you will see that in this situation here, I'm running roughly 304.7 megs, 4% of just an 8 gig partition or 8.9 gig partition in uh, a virtual box takes up very little space this panel that I brought up here is the TAS panel it is the heart of slit, slit TAS I'm sorry everything you're gonna find is gonna be in here such as processes easy easy way to get to terminal installing packages is can kind of strange you can go in here and you recharge the package list for instance and that just makes sure everything's up to date you can do a check updates here which will check to see if there's anything that needs to be um, updated I'm not sure if this is a typo or if they meant to say Tugalal <laughs> if you wanted to install something such as the source say for Linux you can do a search here and you can find different things to bring up I guess it would have been easier for me to type in kernel but nonetheless if you're looking for applications that's how you get out about installing them however this is using openbox and openbox is sometimes a little difficult to configure this is the menu system that it came with and this is pretty much straight how it is so we have here a few applications that it's installed for development purposes some documentation which I found to be very useful in getting the package some packages installed and getting some things to work I did have some problems getting my wireless to work in the beginning Luckily, I was able to copy over firmware packages from my Gen 2 distribution, and from that, I was able to get the wireless drivers. Now, interestingly enough, this is running a very old version of the kernel, 2.6.37, and it is very outdated. This is a distribution from 2012. I'm afraid that it hasn't been updated for quite a while and because of that it is lacking in a lot of current features in fact here you can see Linux kernel 2.6.37 
it is running Midori for its internet. In games, you have chess and Sudoku. In graphics, you just have a very minimal set. Not even the GIMP is installed. And as I said, for internet, we have Midori. It has a few chat clients. Very basic information here. Very basic multimedia. And of course, with the Office products, almost nothing to say. Now, that being said, you can go into this and you can install through the package manager up here with the TAS panel any packages such as LibreOffice or Abbey Word or Numeric. And in the documentation, it does talk about how to go about doing that. What it doesn't talk about, though, is how you get those to show up within the menu system. Now, I'm a KDE guy and that sort of thing is not in my forte to figure out with Openbox how to set it up and make it so that the menus run proper. I know I have looked at a few Openbox flavors before and there seem to be a few tools in there that helped out. This distribution seems to be lacking. We move on here. Preferences, of course, as I've been sitting here, and system tools. Quite simple. Now, in the hardware detection and drivers, that was very useful. I was actually able, when I was trying this stuff out in my main partition, to be able to have it detect properly my network card, things like that. However, when I did try to do the NVIDIA drivers, to see if that would set things up proper. It said it installed them correctly. After reboot, everything was hosed, everything was dead. I tried to do NVIDIA setup for xconfig, things like that. It still kept dying, saying that the drivers that it installed were not the proper NVIDIA drivers for this. And I can only imagine that most likely it has to do with how old this distribution is. Even though 2012, this computer was still out on the market and the video card should have been out there, I think the NVIDIA driver should have worked. However, it did see my wireless at least. It did see other aspects of my system. You know, Here we have just the basics of VirtualBox. If you were looking for a lightweight, very bare bones system, this would work for you. This system, for what it has, is probably an okay system to have. Although, I have reviewed a few other very lightweight systems like Anti-X that I found to be far superior and much easier to configure and set up. This would really need a little bit more tinkering to get to work for you. In a pinch, if you were looking for something that would only take up the bare minimum, this may work. However, I just found it kind of difficult to work with. I'm looking at it because a subscriber did request that I take a look at this in one of my last videos. And so I decided, hey, why not? Let's throw it on there and see what we can do. Been using it for a little bit. And to be honest with you, I find it lacking in a lot of areas that I have issues with. I tried setting up NTPD to see if I could get the date and time proper. I tried setting the date and time, for instance, manually. I just ran into a few weird issues with it. In the networking, since I am using the virtual box edition. Ethernet was no problem at all through NAT. With wireless, once I got the firmware, everything seemed to work proper. Although with my system with the wireless issues that I have because of hardware, they tended to give me a little bit of trouble. Setting up users was very easy during the install and setting up the bootloader and all that was flawless with the installer as well. If you have no other systems that are on this on the hard drive 
when I put this in the other partition I didn't use their bootloader and I set it through my own it worked fine that way as with with no issues it did do a good job detecting PCI and USB devices however I had a terrible time making sure the modules would work properly with this distribution it does have some interesting features here being able to customize your system setup here after for instance you've gotten this installed you've installed a few applications you can then take this and create a live USB or a live CD-ROM based upon your configuration that you've made here that is a nice feature I'm not too familiar with being able to do that in other distributions and of course this is just like looking at the live DVD because this is where I came to install Slitaz and I'm assuming this, I'm saying this right right here now after I tried to do an upgrade system at one point in time seeing if I could fix that in getting the simple screen recorder and other desktop recording software to work within the partition it ended up crashing on me and upon reboot I had a blinking cursor of death and a black screen that no longer functioned which is why I decided after numerous attempts that I didn't want to play around with it in the partition anymore that I'd throw it in the virtual box to continue to review this product if you're looking for multimedia if you're looking for flash this system does not work well it's pretty much just get you into a Linux operating system with the least amount of memory needed and the least amount of hard drive used for that this may work to get you going on an old old Pentium although some of the reviewers that I looked at just to see how it fared in other reviews to see if I was having a unique experience or not did state that they did have some problems having it work on older hardware whereas it seemed to work much better on newer hardware that being said I don't see the purpose of having a basic system that should work on minimal hardware if all it will do is work on newer hardware so Taz will give you the basic functionality that you're looking for no bells and whistles but as I did say you can install multiple software packages if you want through their configuration you can do browsing you can get to things like gparted and other useful utilities within Linux I just want to say that there are other smaller small distributions out there that can probably do this just as effectively so thank you for watching this first impressions on Slitaz if you have any comments or shed some light on things for other viewers that may look at this feel free to add them to the comments I appreciate that and as I always say if it's morning evening noon or night whatever you're having I hope you enjoy it thank you for watching Stay tuned for next time, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.